we is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Shall we arise? In the name of the Lord Almighty, we welcome you to the presence of God as we pray that our act of worship shall be acceptable unto the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgive all thy iniquities, who heal all thy diseases, who redeem thy life, from destruction, who can be with loving kindness and tender mercy. The Lord, we bless the name of the Lord for bringing us this far as we continue in the joy and celebration of resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a prayer that whatever seems dead in our lives shall receive the breath of life in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as we worship the Lord, it will bless our lives. We bless our hope Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We join the host of heaven as we sing and praise the resurrected Messiah in this session of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God, my Father.
sebe Jigbini, jigbini, biya zai leke Tabi, ziyo mushimare Oba toju mo Afuye, afuye keke Tio shebe Jigbini, jigbini, biya zai leke
God, give praise to His name. He has been such a faithful God. Slide on to be. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we, we give you thanks. We acknowledge your faithfulness. We acknowledge your law. We do not take it for granted that we are still among, among the living. We are not better than those that are dead. Our being alive is by your mercy. Lord, we acknowledge every good thing you have done for us. And Lord, we return all the glory back unto you. We say, Our Father, be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Over everything that we have, living and non living, we say thank you. Over our children, home and abroad, Lord, we appreciate you. At this challenging time in our nation, in, in the entire universe, thank you for keeping us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for being our strength. Thank you for sustenance. Thank you for everything. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us at the very end of our needs, even at this challenging moment. Thank you, Jehovah, that we are not begging for bread. All glory, honor, power, majesty, and adoration be unto you alone, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. As human, we bow before you and we confess our weaknesses. Every area in which we have failed and disappointed you, loving and faithful God, we ask, O God, that you be merciful to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of the living God, we ask you, O to, to, to be part of this service, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to take charge of our worship this day. That your presence, O oh God, we feel this actually and fill our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Through this act of worship, Lord, we pray that you will touch every life, you will touch every situation, you will minister to our challenges, and you draw our attention closer to yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. All the vessels we be using, oh, using, oh God, we pray that you release unto them Jehovah unction to function at a time like this in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful God, because of answer. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have all prayed. The Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive us our trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. And the living say, Amen. We shall sing the hymn 208 in 208.
16. Psalm 16. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Psalm 16. Keep and protect me, O God, for in you, in you I have found refuge, and in you do I put my trust and hide myself. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good beside or beyond you. As for the godly who are in the land, they are the excellent, the noble, and the glorious, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied, who chose or who choose another God. Their drink, offerings of blood, will I not offer or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen and assigned portion, my cup. You hold and maintain my lot. The lines are falling for me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Yes, my heart instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My body too shall rest and confidently dwell in safety. For you will not abandon me to show. Neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. This is the word of God. The New Testament reading is taken from the first epistle of Peter, chapter 1, from verse 3 to verse 9. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 3 to verse 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy are forgotten us again unto the lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that, and that that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God to faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We are in ye greatly rejoice. Though now, for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom have you not seen, ye love. In whom though now ye see not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of our souls. This is the word of the Lord. We shall sing the hymn 549, in 549.
seated in his presence. We give glory to God Almighty, for he has counted us worthy to be in his presence today, to celebrate yet another time in his presence, especially in the euphoria of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, being the first Sunday after the Easter celebration. I'd like to say again that Christ is risen, is risen. risen indeed. Hallelujah. Adonai, we worship, we worship this song. your holy name for this wonderful day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So Lord, as we are expecting from you, Lord, may our expectations not be dashed. So speak to us now for we are listening and let your word bring life and peace to us. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, the theme of our meditation is set your mind on the Lord set your mind on the Lord and our text is taken from Psalm 16 verse 8 which says I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand I shall not be moved brethren in the Lord this is a word of decision from someone who has tasted of the goodness of the Lord and will not allow it passing back for one minute. If you look at verses 5 and 6, you will see the lot and lines which refer poetically to the division of that promised land which Joshua saw. And that climbs the fulfillment of God's promises, as you have it in Joshua chapter 21 verses 43 to 45. God is as special to the psalmist as his inheritance of the land. And that's why he said he has made the Lord his portion. You will recall that in the WhatsApp message that I was inspired to send out on Easter day, the theme there says, news from the graveyard. News from the graveyard. And I charge all of us to luxuriate ever in the Lord of glory because the resurrection is the foundation of Christian faith that is an empty tomb. And I alluded to the assertion of Thomas Hewson because he has seen what the agnostics and the unbelievers remarked about Jesus' resurrection as being incredible or an irrational idea. And Thomas said, Grave, where is thy victory now? See the light upon thy, his brow. Empty, see the stony bed. Christ is risen from the dead. A French skeptic, Joseph Ernst Rehan, unwittingly spoke about the truth of the resurrection when he sneered and said, Christianity lives lives on the fragrance of the empty verse. Christianity lives on the fragrance of the empty verse. That is, Christianity lives on the saving grace of the resurrected Jesus. No wonder we started this service with another hymn of resurrection wherein we said in the last four lines of stanza three, which is the last stanza, said, let all things seen and unseen of gladness blend for Christ the Lord has risen a joy that has no end. Our joy has no end because we have the living who is the resurrected Messiah that we serve. A dead man cannot say 
Only a living Savior could rescue a dying world. Only a living Savior could rescue a dying world. No wonder John Piper, in his sermon, the gladness of the risen God, asked three salient questions. And number one, he said, do you want to be happy? Number two, do you want your happiness to be partial or full? And the third one, do you want your happiness to stop or to last as long as you last? I tell you, these three questions should be treasured in our hearts as children of God, for they are the rock bottom concerns of the Bible. I need to say to you again that every time I see the acronyms of B-I-B-L-E, something tells me that is the best instrument for believers to live for eternity. Wherever the Bible has had its profoundest effect in people's lives, it hasn't been because of the demands of a new duty, because of the power of the new pleasure. A power, the power of a new pleasure. A missionary, Mary Patton, at the time when she was to give up the ghost, just about one year, just a little above one year of their marriage, just after the marriage, she and her husband set out for a missionary job. And the missionary assignment is in the slums, and they cater for children who live in the storm. And there, many people were slain, many were dead. But this woman encouraged the husband. Like I told you, it's just one year after the marriage. But less than one year, they had a son. But lo and behold, this man buried the wife. And three weeks after he had buried the wife, he buried the son. There you will exclaim to say, what mission is he on to? He should pack his bag and baggages and go home. But he said, the words of the wife encourage him to move on. And this is what the wife said, I do not regret, I do not regret any bit leaving my home, my family and friends. If I had to do it over, I would do it with pleasure. Yes, with all my heart. And that was the last parting words that this woman gave to her husband. And John, as the name of the, of the husband, said, Those who sustained me that I have been able to set out to win many unto the Lord. John Parton said, I have gone mad but for Jesus I must have gone mad but for Jesus I must have been buried lying in an empty grave with my wife but lonely he said but for Jesus this is the profoundest effect of biblical Christianity and that explains the longing desire of the psalmist the Bible produces a serious pursuit of happiness because Jesus never once condemned the quest for happiness, but often he has rebuked us for even taking it so lightly. The thoughts of the psalmist in Psalm 16, our text, were expounded and expressed in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 25 to 28. Here what verse 28 says, You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of joy in your presence. Psalm 16 is one of the psalms that Peter evidently pondered deeply on. In verse 4, he said, Those who choose or follow after another God multiply their sorrows. They multiply their sorrows. They are deep offerings of blood I will not offer, nor even take up their names upon my lips. Beloved, we have to be more serious with God. Some of us, God's people, are not only experiencing lockdown as a result of COVID-19, 
but some Christians, some children of God, are experiencing locked out. Is your own locked down or locked out? Because the risen Lord is on the outside. If the risen Lord is on the outside of your life, then you are locked out. Even while you are experiencing lockdown, you are completely locked out. Because the door of the resurrection is already closed against you. May that never be our Lord. Never be locked out of heaven for eternity in the name of Jesus. If you see the parables of the ten virgins, and you check the lot of the five foolish ones, having waited too long, and having all the time to themselves to prepare, they never received Christ. They suddenly face the terrifying reality that the door of salvation is closed to them forever. But Matthew chapter 25 verse 10 says about those whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Because even in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, those whose heart is stayed on the Lord, they are kept in perfect peace. When the Lord came, they went in with him, that is the groom to the wedding. If Christ should return right now, millions will share a similar faith with the five foolish virgins that they will be locked out. They have heard Jesus say, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved in John chapter 10 verse 9. But they have wandered their heart, roy, enthused, and I quote him. The day of life is passing by. Soon, night your soul will hide. And then too late will be your cry if you are just outside. That explains why Apostle Paul exhorted us to make our reservation as we have it read in the New Testament in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. He said, To our inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Because in verse 3 he said, We have a living hope. Dear people of God, Christ's resurrection is the cause for our celebration. We must endeavor to celebrate it and keep celebrating, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. As Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10 says, The psalmist in Psalm 144, verse 15, establishes the source of our happiness and joyous celebration. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Happiness, therefore, will never come to those who fail to appreciate what they have already had. And I think that again, happiness will never come to those who fail to appreciate what they already have. Robert Green Ingerson remarked, quoting him, Happiness is not something we carry in our hands. It is something that comes from the heart. And what comes from the heart is what the Lord has supplied. So happiness comes from God and from God alone. Beloved, it is not happiness that makes us grateful. Gratefulness makes us happy. It is not happiness that makes us grateful. Gratefulness makes us happy. In this troubled world, we can gain happiness and remain in joyous celebration if we are immersed in the Bible knowledge of God. And we also have our focus on Him and His kingdom as well as His wonderful purpose for all humankind. In the Lord, Romans chapter 8, verse 5 says, For those who live according to the flesh, they will set their minds in the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. And verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's why Ron Kennedy will sing righteousness, peace. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness speaks and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? I'm sure you want to respond and say, I am already a part of that kingdom. Because righteousness speaks and joy in the Holy Spirit is what obtains for us here and even here after. Beloved of God, Psalm 16, David Salmon encourages all of us, especially Christians, to practice the presence of God in their daily lives. And that gives an instrument 
of us working with him and then he gave instructions of how to do it. I'm going to center it on two aspects. Number one is center your thoughts on the Lord. If you must make your gaze to be on the Lord and setting your minds on the Lord, because Colossians chapter 3 already said we should not set our minds on things below, but on things above. So we must center our thoughts on the Lord. I have made the Lord the thought or the center thought of my life. Is what he has said in our test. A compass needle always points north. Though it can also momentarily be disturbed, as we have COVID-19 disturbing our peace at this moment, but it will always settle back to the position from where it is centered. And that's why we must all the time say to ourselves that we shall be connected unto the Lord and we will not have any disconnect until this trouble is over and forever we will remain with Him. When you center your thoughts on the Lord, you continually come back to Him as your point of reference. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end of all things. All things come from Him and ultimately all things come back to Him. He is the source of all, ultimately the fulfillment of all. You will note that in Romans chapter 1 verses 28 to 30, those who do not have their mindset of God, they are left to do what seems best to them. Of God says, a way that seems best to a man, the end thereof is destruction. We live in a society that is corrupted. We live in a society that is corrupted by humanism. But we have forgotten that God is all and in all. We must not let the society tell us what is important. It is for us to find in what God says and what God says is what we'll do. And that is to say to us that when it's all going to, to God, whether it's coming to an end, God brightens a new beginning. And then you will see that God is everything to us. So God must be central in all our focus and in all things that we do. We must set our thoughts on God. Number two, we must cultivate awareness of God. Have you thought of it in God's presence at worship? Why is it that two people can be in the same worship center at the same worship service? One is caught up in the presence of the Lord, gazing on his beauty and also looking at God's magnificent power and also God's nearness to him. And the person standing or sitting beside him is wondering in his or her heart how the service is going to be over. That the service should be over so that he or she can go home and watch the game. Maybe watch Sea World, African Magic, or what have you. But two persons are there. One is gazing at heaven, one is busy dissipating his energy on things of this world. God is there for both of them. The issue is awareness and the decision to engage the presence of the Lord. Look at Jacob in Genesis chapter 28. Later, when he experienced God and centered his thought on him, he named the place better. In verse 16, he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And I will put it succinctly to say, Surely the Lord is in this place. I was not aware of it. Have you seen 2 Kings chapter 6? The simple prayer of Elijah saved his servant from the blindness of heart and blindness of eye. Because he was panicking. He got panicked when he saw even his assailants coming over. But like I always want to say, that Christians must not be panic stricken, but they must be faith driven. So it was the simple prayer that brought him back until he was able to have his loose to look at the Lord. For we live 
by faith and not by sight. Beloved and the Lord. The Lord is always near to hear. I want you to have that at the back of your mind and store it in your heart that the Lord God is near to hear. And in Psalm 145 verse 18, that's where we saw it that is near to hear. Because the Lord is near to those who call upon him, to those who call upon him in truth. And that fears and flee in the light of God's presence. Dark will always fear and flee in the light of God's presence. Beloved, to know God's presence, therefore, is to know God's power. And to enjoy His presence is our greatest privilege. Psalm 27, verse 4, David had this to say, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The invitation is, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. For in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Psalm 16, verse 11. Life is lonely. When we are not interacting with the Lord, we are designed for relationship. See the epidemic of loneliness in America and other developed states or nations today. We are more committed to our relationship through technology than ever. Even at this moment, we are all based on technology. Technology driven has even left us more lonely than ever before. Facebook gives people a momentary free way of associating and relating. But after it leaves them in the long run to be freely more isolated. Learning to abide in Christ, learning to live in a continual con conviction with God and also conversation with God makes it so well for everyone to be profitable in the land of the living. Beloved and the Lord, as I bring these words to a close, Jesus' presence is the solution to the myriads of human problems. The antidote for the problem we are encountering at the moment is to dwell in the presence of the Lord. Because he who dwells in the presence of the Lord will always have the fullness of his joy. One of the major hindrances to Christian growth and development is the compartmentalizing of our lives that is giving our lives a segment. The person sets aside and also look for a religious activity a week and the lives and set his zeal or her zeal and everything on that religious activity maybe twice a week. But he goes or she goes back to the rest of the week living his or her real life. That is the salvation of our worship. 10% is given to God and 90% we exclude him from our life. This is what we encounter every day. But God wants the totality of our lives. He wants all. Not that he's a hard taskmaster, but he wants to be involved in every part of our system. And that is why we must know that his business is to bring us nearer to him than we first believe. Beloved in the Lord, what is your take about this? Have you centered your thoughts on the Lord? Have you centered everything about you in Him, knowing full well that the Lord is always with us and will never leave nor forsake us? Bow your heads and let us pray. I know Our weakness and 
know you will supplant our steps with your strength. Help us, Lord, to always gaze at you, so that, Lord, our gaze upon you on I will make our raise here below very sweet. And you will grant that our relationship with you, Lord, will bring us eternal joy and salvation. This is our humble request, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. What is this, the Lamb? Hallelujah. Please let us all rise on our feet as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and let us pray. Collect for the Sunday, first Sunday after Easter. Almighty Father, who has given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the living of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of the same your son Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The prayer and collect for peace and grace. O God, you are the author of peace and lover of concord. Knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all our of our enemies, that we surely trust in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversary through the merit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, bring us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall not into any sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance to do always that which is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Still in the mode of prayers, we have heard from the throne of grace via the vessel the Lord prepared to water our hearts this day. And we have been encouraged all to set our mind, our gaze on the Lord this season and even after this season, so that we all will be privileged to the benefit and the blessings thereof. Allow us to sing this song together and still in the realm of prayers as we pour our hearts unto him, our Lord and Maker. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you reign in my life. I'm so glad you reign. I'm so glad you came to save me. I'm so glad you came to save me. Sí, sí. 
sin and the realm of death unto eternal life. With aims of victory and celebrations, we glorify and praise your name today. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, that if Christ had not been raised, our faith is in vain, and our preaching is in is futile. Beloved in Christ, for the privilege and opportunity that God has given to us all today, let us glorify His holy name, appreciate Him for the wonderful joy set before us all. This day, this season, and this period, Christ is risen. Henceforth, no power of death, no power of sickness, nor any form of pestilence, they shall not prevail over us as we travel in our journey. And as we move forth, O oh God, in the euphoria of this season, we set our minds on you, O oh God. Casting away every form of anxiety, we are casting away, Lord, every part of fear. Lord, we remove every form of trouble and calamities by your act of victory and the power of your resurrection. Let such be taken away from our heart, from our soul, in our midst, in our home, in our church, and they will throughout the entire world. We beseech thee, O God, to graciously look upon Direct the thoughts and the mind of all our leaders. We pray at this moment for all those whom you have chosen to be to pilot the affairs of our dear nation, the executive, the legislative, and those in the judiciary have. Let the power of your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding be released upon them. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, setting their minds on you, rescue our land. We pray for our church leaders, the prelates, all our archbishops, our bishops, all ministers of the gospel, all lay leaders. Father, this particular moment in our land, we decree that you aid our faith to remain focused in this season. Trust in you for divine victory. Let not the gate of hell prevail over your church. In the name of Jesus. With passion and sense of commitment, we remember at this crucial moment all health workers, all medical practitioners. Father, you are the great physician. Jesus, you are the great healer. Grant unto these ones divine wisdom as they carry out their essential duties and power of healing. Let it be released upon everyone as they carry out these duties in the name of Jesus. Amen. Loving and resurrected Messiah, we remember all sorts and conditions of men, the destitute, those who are bereaved, those who have been incapacitated one way or the other. We remember the internally displaced persons, those who have been abandoned, those who have been rejected. Grant unto them this particular victory and the joy of your resurrection. As we set our minds on you, Father, as we place our focus on you, Equip our hearts, O oh God, inspire our soul to test after you all the days of our lives. Help us to know you more and the power of resurrection. Apostle Paul reminds us in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, saying that I may know you and the power of resurrection. Lord, this is our desire. This is our petition. Grace to set this on you and to know you more so that these blessings and this victory shall be released upon us. Let it be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, Lord, by the virtue of the power of your word in Job chapter 5, verse 12, Bible says you will disappoint the devices of the crafty so that their hands will not perform their enterprise. Every activity from the pit of hell, from the common of darkness, meditating, waging war against our land, let them be disappointed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. individually and collectively, all activities of evil of such, by the power of your resurrection, let them be taken away. Amen. As we set our gates on you, we shall not be disappointed. Amen. Lord, in this, in this moment, this season of resurrection, as we celebrate the post-resurrection event, keep us basking in the aura of your Lord, and let men compete to bless us. Amen. Let men complete, compete to remember us. Let the joy of this season continually be our portion. We pray, O oh God, that your healing power of resurrection, 
Let his power visit our land. Let it visit us in our homes. Let it visit us in all areas of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. And at the close, we all shall convert in your sanctuary and celebrate your faithfulness. We shall all convert and celebrate your kindness. We shall all appreciate your faithfulness. Indeed, your compassion, your goodness, and your loving kindness remain it forever. Let it be our portion in the name of Jesus. We look up to you so that at the close of our journey, we all shall be counted worthy to live with you as we set our gaze in that heavenly kingdom. Remember us, loving Father, once again in our homes. Remember us in our families. Remember us in our places of work. Remember our economy. Remember our marriages. Remember our children. And remember our loved ones. Thank you, Father, because you know you have answered. And the joy, and the joy of it all is to see you as we set our minds always in you and on you, God alone. Thank you, loving Father, because you know you have answered. For we have prayed with faith and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We give thanks to the Almighty God for the privilege we have to celebrate today the first Sunday after Easter. It's a prayer that next year when the living shall be celebrating, none of us will be in the grave in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We also rejoice with those that are marking their birthday this week and this month. It's a prayer that they shall celebrate more of God's faithfulness in the land of the living in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to remind us that by the grace of God on Wednesday at 12 noon, we'll be having a communion service. So we encourage you to get your communion elements ready, your wine, your bread, as you prepare your table. We celebrate from here and we all partake of the Lord's body and blood. And we pray that through it, the Lord will renew our strength. Amen. And every aspect of our lives that need visitation shall be visited in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, if you know any of our members who is going through challenges at this critical time, we encourage you to call put the, either the presbyter or any of our stewards and update them on such so that the needful will be done. And likewise, if you intend to show love to other members of the church through sending of gifts or whatever you have in your mind, you can also speak to the presbyter or any of our stewards, pass the information across to them, and the needful will be done, and it shall be well with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. And lastly, we want to encourage us to pay our tithes and thanksgiving directly to the church account, which will be projected. So kindly follow your tithes to the church account, and God will bless you as you do that in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. Amen. It's time to bring out our gifts unto the Lord as we present them unto the Lord. Giving glory to the Lord, He reigns. Giving glory to the Lord, He reigns. He reigns, He reigns, He reigns. Giving glory to the Lord, Hallelujah. Giving glory to the Lord, He reigns.
so much have given unto us, we have presented this token as a sign of appreciation. Lord, we pray that you bless our lives, Amen. bless the work of our hands, bless every aspect of our lives. Amen. May life not be difficult for us. Amen. May you, O oh God, meet us at the very point of our needs. Amen. Thank you because you have answered, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Shall I take the hymn? 422. In 400. Lord, we acknowledge that you are our God 
and we confess that we have no other God but you. For only you can do what no man can do, and only you can say what no man can say. We thrust our lives into your hands even as we rise to go now, for we know that you are inheritance and you are abortion forever. So Lord Almighty, we can boldly declare as we go into this new week that beautiful lines are falling in pleasant places for us. And we can exclaim that we have a goodly heritage. So Lord Almighty, we pray that nothing of God will make us drift from the position we are in the body of Christ. Nothing will make us stray away like a lost sheep. We shall remain under that shepherd who will always be with us and will never leave nor forsake us. So help us, Lord, even as we continue our work here on earth, grant that we may experience heaven here below, that, Father, even at the close of the age, heavens above will not elude us. Thank you, Lord, because we know at the close of today, we will have cause to rejoice in your presence, and your joy in our lives will be to overflowing. Glory to your name for your answered our prayers, because we offer this sincerely in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and all members of your families this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.